1619, the Dutch introduced the first captured African Americans, planting the seeds of slavery, the system that evolved into a nightmare of abuse and cruelty that would ultimately divide the nation. Some people say that slaves have just resisted. The fact is, they did starting with the slave ship journeys across the Atlantic and once in the New World, enslaved Africans found a whole bunch of ways to resist. Slavery scholars have documented many of the, um, the different rebellions and junk that happened. And if it weren't for all these escapes and suicides even, starting with African captives who jumped into the sea rather than face loss of their freedom, that made the buying and selling of humans such a risky you know, and, and lucrative enterprise. Beyond fa famed slave revolts, such as Nat Turner were less well-known ones as that of the Denmark Vesey. The literate freedmen corralled thousands of enslaved people in and around Charleston, South Carolina, and the plans for an ambitious insurrection that would kill all white folk, burn the city, and free those in bondage. After an informant tipped, tipped off authorities, after an informant tipped off authorities, the plot got jacked up at the last minute, and a whole bunch of folk was convicted, and more than 30 organizers were executed. Now, the idea of chosen bondage, like, you know, Kanye say slavery was a choice, right? Also ignores those thousands of slaves who opted for terrifying risky escape north going you know imagine man this network <laughs> called the underground railroad no gps now probably they ain't even had much of a map those unlucky enough to be caught and returned knew what was waiting on them most runaways became horrific cautionary tales for their fellow slaves with dramatic public shows of torture dismemberment burning and murder even when they didn't run, wrote historian Howard Zinn, they engaged in sabotage, slowdowns, and subtle forms of resistance which asserted, if only to themselves and their brothers and sisters, that dignity is human beings. That dignity, resilience, and courage should never be belittled or misinterpreted as an exercise of free will. So what they're trying to say here is, slaves did all they could. Some of them might have rode with it, but many of them fought back in different ways. The same way we fight back today. Some of them may have been more dramatic with it. Some of them may have been a little more smooth with it, but they all fought back in some kind of way. So he's saying, I guess about the free will thing is that slaves didn't just fight back because yeah, I got the right to fight back. They fought back because they wanted to show their brothers and sisters that they had each other back and that one day they was going to break up out of this. Now sometimes you might hear the question, were slaves, you know, happy to be taken care of? Now these kind of misconceptions about slavery didn't come out the blue. American culture has long been deeply threaded with images of black inferiority and even nostalgia for the social control that slavery provided. On the eve of the Civil War, white supremacists such as Confederate President Alexander Stevens stressed that slavery would be the cornerstone of their new government, which would be based upon the great truth that the Negro is not equal to the white man. That slavery subordination to the superior race is his natural and normal condition. It was an attitude that would be continually reinforced in textbooks that have glossed over the nation's systematic violence and racism and the countless damaging cultural expressions of blacks in entertainment, advertising, and more. This is why when people run their Confederate flag and people have a problem with it and people say, oh, this is my... Uh, this is my ancestors, blah, blah, blah. Hey, your ancestors fought in a government that said that slavery would be the cornerstone of American society. Basically saying that we're going to continue to build this junk off the backs of blacks. In 
in the period immediately before this uh, and just following the Civil War, images and paintings and illustrations presented the old plantation as a kind of orderly uh, paradise where happy childlike slaves were cared for by their beneficent masters. Pop culture stereotypes such as the mammy, the coon, the sambo, and the tom emerged and persisted well into the 20th century, permeating everything from advertisement, think Aunt Jemima and Uncle Ben, to movies, to home decor, items like pitchers and salt and pepper shakers and lawn ornaments. They presented blacks as cheerful, subservient darkies with bug eyes and big lips often, and with a watermelon never too far away. Now look, you know, I seen this junk, man. They, they, you know, people to this day still do it. I stay down in Atlanta. I did uh, Amazon delivery, so I see them little, little, um, them little lawn toy look like you know, like you know, people had gnomes on the lawn, but instead it would be like a black guy with big lips and big old eyes all wide. One time I got to one people yard. And they had some in their yard, and a white lady came out, and she was just smiling so hard. And, uh, you know, I still remember that. I don't know, it was almost like, was you, I don't know. She had to know what those things meant, so, you know, was she laughing? Because, I you giving me my package, and even though I'm a racist, I don't know. But, you know, when I see people like that, I really feel sorry for them more than I'm angry at them. But anyway, popular paternalistic depictions such as that of Mammy and Gone with the Wind show slaves as faithful, devoted to their masters and helplessly dependent. The consistent message, blacks were better off under white people oversight. This is why Aunt Jemima finally changed the name of their syrup and took the lady off of her. Me personally, instead of taking her off of her, I would have been fine with keeping it on now. Just get some of that money to black schools. Since you've been capitalizing off the black image all this time. How about get some of that money to the black schools? I would have been fine with that. The Reconstruction and Jim Crow era saw the emergence of an even more damaging stereotype. Blacks as savage, immortal, immoral brutes as seen in the work of authors such as Thomas Dixon and films such as D.W. Griffin's Birth of a Nation. These fear-mongering images of free black men presented them as predatory rapists who once unshackled threatened the purity and virtue of the white woman and needed nothing more than to be contained. Cue the Klan and lynch mobs. <sighs> you know, this kind of reminds me of how, um, uh, uh, Hillary Clinton and, you know, I guess they people, you know, decided to call young black and brown children super predators. You know, the young kids who getting in trouble because they schools is trash and their neighborhoods is drug infested. You know, they decided to call them super predators. Hmm. But, you know, uh, you know, uh, some of us be voting for him, I guess. Don't get offended now, you know, you can vote for whoever you want to, you know, I, you know, uh, you know, vote for what's important to you, you know, that's all. Uh, yeah, so I'm just letting you know that if you did vote that way, that just know that it ain't just one side that's racist, all right? It ain't just the Republicans, all right? Don't get it twisted. It ain't just the Republicans. Now, if you want to vote Democrat because, you know, you agree with some stuff they do, that's fine or whatever. But don't be talking about like that Democrats ain't racist because Democrats is just as racist. And I can prove it to you, but not in this video. In another video one day, I'm going to prove to you that Democrats is just or well, even more racist than the Republicans. It ain't no difference, baby. I ain't gonna lie to you. And you know I ain't lying.
Now, once slavery ended, you know, people had to stand. Why couldn't they just pull themselves up? Now, although the 13th Amendment technically abolished slavery, it provided an exception that allowed for the con continuation of the practice of forced labor as punishment for a crime. Now, in the decades after the Civil War, black incarceration rates grew 10 times faster than uh, that of the general population as a result of programs such as convict leasing who sought to replace slave labor with equally cheap and disposable convict labor. Now, although convict leasing was abolished, it helped to lay the foundations for wave after wave of laws and public policy that encouraged the jailing of African Americans at astronomical rates. As Michelle Alexander writes in her book, The New Jim Crow, Mass Incarceration in the Name of Color Blindness, the criminal justice system was strategically employed to force African Americans back into a system of extreme repression and control, a tactic that would continue to prove successful for generations to come now for y'all that don't know they got private prisons I did a video on this don't know which video it was I think it's the one called why Chicago so tore up or something like that but um the private prison thing it's just um it's something that Joe Biden said he was gonna get rid of because basically corporations was paying judges to lock people up and give them more time because they get paid by it. So it's like, okay, in order to stop the government from paying for prisoners, we'll take care of your prisoners for you. So just pay us X amount of money for each prisoner. So they were paying judges to lock people up and give them even more time because they don't care. They want the prison for because they're making money off each prisoner. So, you know, the, what is it to give a judge a hundred grand even 250 grand imagine how much more years that judge can give when sentencing people just imagine they all add up so if they get money per day from each prisoner i don't know how much but they getting this money every day and you throw them people in that prison and the judge um uh, throw a little get a little put a little extra years on it that's just more money Shoot. Imagine how much damage one judge could do. <sighs> the legacy of slavery and racial inequality can still be seen in countless other ways in American society, from well-documented acts of unfounded police brutality to voting restrictions to ongoing inequalities in employment and education. It's no wonder that the call for reparations for slavery, racial subordination, and racial terrorism continues to inspire debate beyond the original promise made by General William uh, to to come to Sherman just after the Civil War to provide newly freed blacks with 40 acres and a mule. A promise that was quickly took away, and none has been done to address the massive injustice perpetuated in the name of the peculiar institution. In 2016, a study by the UN affiliated group reporting to the UN's High Commissioner on Human Rights made non-binding recommendations that the history and continued fallout of slavery justifies the U.S. commitment to reparations. Wow, so the UN told America, y'all need to go ahead and get them people they, uh, they big new house in the Cadillac. Because the mule ain't going to get it no more, so I need me a Cadillac. <laughs> nice, brand new Cadillac. All right? <laughs> Come on with it. Yep. I love Cadillacs. I like old Cadillacs, but I'll take a new one. If it's free, I'll show take it. Despite substantial changes since the end of the enforcement of Jim Crow and the fight for civil rights, the committee said in the statement, ideology ensuring the uh, domination of one group over another continues to ne negatively impact the civil, political, economic, social, and cultural rights of African Americans today. Slavery was not a choice, but opting to ignore its legacy is. It is a choice that will continue to inflame passions as well as uh, attempt reconciliation without confronting as we con attempt reconciliation without confronting and redressing the awful truth 
the private prison system, uh, I heard Joe Biden said he was going to get rid of it. But it's still here. <laughs> it's still here, man. Now, uh, I don't mess with the government. I don't trust the government. Either side. They've been lying to us forever. They've been beating us forever. Now, we can't change the whole world. We can't change our whole neighborhood. But what we can do is don't let our ancestors die in vain. These people fought. These people uh, didn't give up. If you hear that means your ancestors didn't give up. If you're here today, that means your family before you fought. They didn't give up. So, you fight. You don't give up. They made sure they went through some terrible stuff, man. A terrible time. I hate to go to work at a regular job. Just... I hate the I hate it with all my heart. And these folk was forced to work day in and day out. But they fought through it to give us a chance. So let's make something out of it. You can't change the world. You can't fix the world. But you can fix yourself and you can change your household. Make sure your house is straight. Make sure your family is good. As long as you do that, and everybody do that, we'll be straight. You can try to fix the world, but all you're going to end up doing is breaking down yourself. Take care of yours. That's where it starts.